the idea for the School of Science and Medicine uh, originated from a series of conversations that uh, I had with Frank Sullivan, our board member and vice chair at the Cleveland Foundation. Frank asked the question, what if we had a school that was, had long days, long school years, the best teachers, the best curriculum, a terrific principal, and really high expectations? What could these kids do? One of the critical pieces to the success of the School of Science and Medicine, uh, which is a school that's been ranked uh, excellent in every year of, it, of its existence so far, is, is the fact that it has an independent uh, board of trustees. And it allowed for 15 community members, most of whom are from the medical community, to be involved in curriculum, to be involved in extraordinary fundraising. The very first thing we did is we went to the Cleveland Clinic, Case Medical School in UH, and they instantly bought into the idea, and they've been superb partners. Well, the Cleveland Clinic is only going to be as good as the people that are there, and we need to have great people to populate our organization so that we can deliver great care, develop new ideas and new knowledge. It takes people to do that. We need people. By partnering with uh, the medical institutions here in, in the area, you're, you're really talking to the end user. By tying that to the curriculum, you're really having a forward-thinking curriculum. So not only trying to just meet the basic standards, but you're really, it's far-reaching. And so you're challenging not only the system, but you're challenging the kids at the same time to stretch, to reach. That commitment at the board level and at the partnership level filters through uh, myself to our faculty, to our parents, and to our students that excellence is what's expected. It's a culture that, uh, by leadership, that demands excellence, that requires we do better, go further. Certainly as I come here as a 17-year teacher, I really need to raise my game. Everyone goes the extra step here. Not just teachers, not just administration, but our kids go the extra step too. And it is never a heartache to get them to come. I say, I'm gonna be here on Saturday for four hours. I've got 30 kids in my room. Before I came to the Cleveland School of Science and Medicine, I thought going to school on a Saturday was crazy. You could make me get up before eight o'clock on any day. Now, if I'm not going to a Saturday school, something's wrong. A great majority of the research that we've done points to one of the most impactful experiences um, for any young person. Uh, who's interested in a STEM profession is this concept of mentoring and it's long-term mentoring and what that boils down to is exposure and opportunity. When I was a little kid I lived in the South but I had not seen an African-American doctor until I was eight years old. He came to the house to see my mother. That's when it looked like it was relevant to me, you know, that something I could do. When I saw him and saw the magic of his presence in our home, I said I'm gonna be just like him when I grow up. Dr. Sahil Parit from University Hospital came down and gave a seminar on the cardiovascular health. He broke down cardiology in such a way that I connected with it, you know, on a personal level. I own like the path that I'm on now because of this program. These students have gotten to see live surgeries, uh, been involved in technical research, the ability to work with med students, with professors from the medical school, just extraordinary opportunities. Students at Case Western Reserve School of Medicine get much out of their experience coming over and working with the students at the Cleveland School of Science and Medicine. It is often said that one of the best ways to learn is to teach. And those students are having that experience working with the students at this special school. We're trying to build a culture where it's cool to be a nerd, where it's cool to do science. The ability of the students is, from top to bottom, is much higher. I'm able to go faster, I'm able to go deeper. But I have some students who, um, who are able to understand things quicker than any students I've ever had in my life. Our kids love to learn. They love to be at the building. Um, we can't sometimes get them to leave when they need to, <laughs> when we're closing down. Well, sometimes you're here more than you see your family. We pride ourselves on like the work that we do and how we show that we do it. The more you're here, the more you're like not afraid to have academic battles when people are like, oh, well, I think you're wrong and this is why you're wrong, and then we'll go back and forth. What you learn in class, you actually take it out of class, so like the discussion doesn't stop in class. 
we're not afraid to be wrong anymore. Like, at least we know now what to do to like progress and become better students. We, we cannot do um, what we do alone a, as a system. So it really does, the old adage, it takes a village to really effectively educate children um, and support children and families, it, it does. When outside donors and outside trustees are involved in a school, they own it. You can't get involved in one of these schools. Hold yourself responsible for trying to achieve some successes see these kids and meet these kids and not be hooked. Watching them progress and the pride that they take in who they are and what they represent. It's a validation of one, their own accomplishments. Uh, it's a validation that they belong and it's a validation that there's a whole village that cares about whether they succeed. I think the biggest surprise that I found was how caring the teachers were. As a teacher, I view it as my responsibility. If I don't have the resources, I find them. And I make it happen for my students because they deserve it. These kids deserve the best. It's really shocking to have someone care about you that much. So we have to live the life that uh, we're asking the students to live. And, and that is to be one that really stands for excellence in our work and in who we are and the concept that we're getting better. And we, we have to believe in our children. I don't believe that the challenges we face in education are really achievement gap issues. I think they're expectation gaps. And this school really, again, dispels that myth. Well, if you look at the accomplishments of the school and you look at its own success record and its own report card, the performance of the students here is nothing short of extraordinary. They are the leaders of tomorrow. They are the students who we will be depending on to be our leaders in the not too distant future. And having them associated with our organization is something we're particularly proud of. You can't aim for what you can't see. And, and we're giving the kids a target. Uh, and they're, they're taking dead aim.